Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to another StarCraft 2 video. Now this video will have the grand finals of the very first charity tournament that we ran over at the live stream last Saturday. I'm really excited to let you know that in total we managed to raise $2,800 for charity, which is just absolutely ridiculous. So before we jump into the game, I wanted to give you all a very very big shout out for even if you just decided to watch, but in particular if you decided to donate. The tournament pretty much ran flawlessly and I'm super excited to be doing more in the future as well. I honestly had never anticipated that so many of you decided to tune in as well as so many decided to tip in money for charity and in the all I'm just really really happy to be part of this community. Now this is going to be the grand finals of the Starcraft 2 tournament and I hope you enjoy. But once again, massive 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 thank you. Alrighty, so welcome everyone to the grand finals of the Loco TV charity tournament. This is the very first time we are doing a charity related tournament and this is going to be the grand finals out of 32 players that were between bronze and diamond league. Those two, you know, badasses are now remaining. They're gonna duke it out in a best of five series and in the top right corner we got none other than Neuralisk spawning as the green Terran player. And in the bottom right corner, we got his opponent known as Teddy GG, who both have been fighting their way through different kinds of opponents for quite a significant amount of time. Now, I do want to give a big shout out to the moderators that helped me organize this thing a lot. In particular, Rashi Chiru has been putting a ton of effort into this tournament. So if I could see some heart spam in the chat for all of the mods that have been working at this, that would be much appreciated. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. So far, uh, we have raised 1,373 euro for kids that don't have any toys and no games whatsoever. So it's really, really awesome. I'm super excited with the way things have turned out so far. And I'm hoping that this finals is going to be giving us some high quality games as well. But yeah, big shout out to the moderators that made this all possible. Wouldn't have been able to do it without them because, hey, organizing a tournament takes a heck of a lot of time. So thank you all very much. <laughs> no worries guys, no worries. So let's get this underway. Let's get this grand finals underway. I'm excited for it We've been seeing some insane games so far already You got to keep in mind that all the players that are playing in this tournament have all played all random and uh, Both Teddy GG and Neuralisk have mentioned to me that they are uh, Primarily Zerg players now. It's important to keep in mind that they aren't fighting for nothing They aren't just fighting for anything uh, the winner of this uh, this series will be receiving a um, digital key for the Overwatch uh, Collector's Edition, as well as a couple of other keys, for, for example, the uh, Nova DLC key for StarCraft 2, as well as the Avatar Commander key. And the loser of this series will be um, provided with a key for Overwatch as well. Either if, you know, to use it themselves or to go ahead and give one away. Kind of depends on what they want to do with it, but either way, let's get this underway. So the very first game in the best of five series, obviously best of five, meaning that they, you know, either need to win uh, three games in a row, but at the very least, they will need to win three games in order to pick up this series. Looks like we see some relatively standard play, though, from both of the opponents. However, we aren't seeing an expansion from the Protoss here. Teddy GG opening the series up rather aggressively. He's got the very first main tech building down already, and that is obviously going to be the robotics facility. He has decided to go for the Robo Bay. He's already got four gateways down, and while I was talking about how this looked relatively standard, now that I'm seeing, I was going to say, five gateways seemed like a really big commit, but now that I'm seeing, he's going to likely go for a war prism as well as several gateways. It is up to his opponent to hold this properly. Not seeing the war prism does just yet, I wouldn't be surprised if he queues that up very soon, or actually, he's going to go ahead and pick the immortal here first. In the meantime though, the very first couple of adepts have managed to get their way across the map, and they will now try and do the maximum amount of damage they can. We do see that there is currently a Widow Mine in the production in that factory. So that obviously does mean that he will be able to ward away these units eventually. As long as obviously the Widow Mine doesn't just get picked off for free. But he's gonna go ahead and burrow it. And it's fine. And it's fine. Now one thing to note about Widow Mines, they do shoot pretty much, or they do one shot all of the gateway units uh, from uh, full HP to zero. Really important to, uh, to uh, note that because obviously that means that all of these units are gonna get one shot and immediately murdered right when the, uh, right when the Widow Mine does attach to them. 
Now, the Immortal is going to be joining the fight very shortly. We did see a little bit of a supply block for Teddy and GG, which makes it rather difficult for him to get a solid army out. But he has gone for the one base all in. And it seems like his opponent, at the very least, has a good grasp of what exactly is going on. He did manage to scout out that there was a lot of early game tech here. He did see the robotics facility in production early on into the game. And he's wisely decided not to land the command center at the low ground, at least just yet. He's just making a lot of units, he's adding on the starport, and he's trying his very best to get a massive army going here as well. Now he is moving down currently though, he's trying his very best to get the economy, but no, he now, he now sees the entire Protoss force sitting at his front door, and he's decided to just simply sit in his base himself as well. Now Teddy GG does not actually have any backup depots, he does not have any additional depots, and if he loses two of those, that could actually be disastrous for him. He's not going to be supply blocked just yet, though. Obviously, that command center helps out a lot in this regard as well, giving him a ton of additional supply. And, well, another key or a key unit there being picked up. There's a lot of stalkers left over, but they are all funneled behind that uh, command center. And very nicely, so far, the Neuralisk is dealing with all of this aggression quite well. We see the second Widow Mine after the first one has also been uh, demolished there being picked up and burrowed behind the main buildings. We do see a nice little scan to try and pick up the uh, Observer. Sadly, he's not going to be getting it just yet, but it looks like Protoss is starting to look extremely promising. Wow! Really nice force with as well, keeping these units away and these SCVs away from helping in the fight for the majority of the time there. And slowly but surely, it looks like this one base all in from Teddy GG is starting to work out. Now, there's still a lot of units incoming. We still do not see the expansion from the Protoss player here, so he definitely needs to either finish off the game or do substantial amounts of damage, at least for the time being, but he's managing to do it. He's managing to deal with it really nicely so far, and that, yeah, that Widow Mine going down definitely is also a very big deal. Now, the GG is cool, and game number one goes in favor of Teddy GG. Alrighty, so welcome to the King Sejong Station. This is going to be the second game in a best of five series between Teddy GG and Neuralisk. During uh, the break between game number one and game number two, we had Kisa's donate 26 euros and Benzala also donating an additional five. Absolutely insane. We've already got the donation total up to 1,405 euros, which is amazing. A very, very large amount of money. But either way, it's gonna go all directly to the actual charity and all directly to the kids. So things should work out beautifully. But anyways, Neuralisk is going to be spawning in the top left corner of King Sejong Station with the green Terran pieces. And in the bottom right corner, we see his opponent, Teddy GG, after taking the very first game in his favor. Also with the Terran pieces. This is going to be interesting. Neither player playing their main races just yet. And just to clarify, both of these are Diamond League level players. Um, both of them, um, you know, are definitely Yahoo! at a high level. And we see Venravel donating another additional 18 euro as well. He says, a long time fan of yours. Great content and great tournament, mate. No worries, Venravel. Thank you very much for supporting uh, the charity, man. Really happy with the way things are working out so far. I, I mean, this tournament has run extremely smoothly. Really happy to see um, more than 1,100 people watching live at some point as well. It's really incredible to see uh, this, so, so, this much support for, uh, you know, kids around the world. It's, it's pretty insane. Anyways, though. We see Neuralisk opening up with the Reaper here, and he obviously isn't aware yet of the fact that his opponent is playing Terran. At the same time, Teddy GG also having absolutely no knowledge of his opponent being Terran either. However, we do see a, build, uh, a bit of a deviation as far as the build orders go. So Vactory is going down here for Neuralisk. He's getting the second gas as well before getting the second command center, where his opponent, Teddy GG, is focusing on the economy first. Obviously very very nicely done by him because the economy is going to be extremely important But this does necessarily or like immediately mean that he's not going to be tacking up nearly as fast And as you can see Neural is going for the very popular 1-1-1 strategy it used to be something you saw a lot You go one gateway or one uh, one star or <laughs> one gateway one barracks one factory and then one starport as well You're gonna use those to your advantage So both players now know that it is going to be indeed a Terran versus Terran but it definitely all comes down to Neuralisk being able to do a substantial amount of damage here early on. Because the second expansion for Teddy GG is already finishing up. And that's extremely important to keep in mind. 
Once you get to once you get to um, the second base, obviously the double mule production and whatnot is gonna start kicking in extremely quickly, and that will really give you a huge lead as far as the economy goes. We do eventually see the expansion being added on right now for Neuralisk as well. He's starting up the expo, but Yahoo! finally, primarily here, dang, a real human being just donated 44 euro. Absolutely awesome, man. A really big amount of money once again. Thank you very, very much. That's awesome. But um, we see the Widow Mine in production right now, as well as the Medivac. And the Medivac, as well as the Widow Mine, are going to be able to do quite a little bit of work. By the way, guys, if I could see a heart in the chat for Mr. A Real Human Being for that massive support for the kids, that'd be awesome. But we see the Medivac being loaded up. Now, this Medivac is, you know, going to be flying across the map. It's going to try and do a substantial amount of damage to try and get as many economy kills as he possibly can. He's probably going to be aiming here for the SCV kills because that's really where the advantage is going to be gathered. At the same time, though, he decided to go for the Tech Lab as well as the um, beautiful Banshee here as well as the Cloak for the Banshee. So an extremely aggressive play here by Neuralisk. He's going to try his very best to get the maximum damage in and go for the economic Yahoo! pressure here as well. Motlasis donating an additional 20 euro as well. It's climbing very fast, guys. Awesome. Thank you guys very much. But right here, right now, is where this game is starting to look, ooh, really, really risky. There is several Widow Mines located in the Mineral Lines, and lucky for him, he does have a scan available. Very, very nicely done. Neuralisk not quite getting the worker kills that he was looking for here. Not quite seeing the amount of kills that he was really hoping for. And while he may pick up a couple of more SCVs, it is not looking that amazing for him so far. But you gotta keep in mind, at this point in the game, there is absolutely no vision whatsoever for his opponent. And while we do see a little bit of energy saved up on this orbital command here, potentially for a single scan, at this point in time, there is no counter whatsoever to this Banshee. Cloak is going to be finishing up in just a matter of seconds. And the mule just does land. Yes, he is dropping all of the mules. There is 53 energy remaining as well on the main command center, but the mule is dropped over there too. That does mean that there is no cloak available, and while Teddy GG is moving across the map, Neuralisk has free reign of the expansions of his opponent as well as the main base. He's gonna be able to get a lot of SCV kills, but whether or not Neuralisk will be able to hold on with his Terran timing attack, that is gonna be the real question. Teddy GG not really having any kind of massive economy right now. He does use the only scan that he has to scan the natural. Doesn't have, um, you know, Yahoo! the double medevac production here either. Helicon also, or Halcyon rather, also donating a big chunk of money here with another 20 euro donation. But while the natural ends up falling here, the siege tank is already in positioning. But this is where the real fight is happening. We see a huge, huge amount of kills already on this one Banshee. 8 kills, 9 kills, 10 kills. He's getting so many SCV kills and there is no scan available. There's no scan, there is no vision, there's no nothing. And while the expansion ended up falling, so many workers end up going down. Neuralisk actually having the advantage as far as the worker goes. And while there's definitely double mule production right now for his opponent, no scan just yet, no scan just yet. He's still trying to eat away at as many of these units as possible, loading them up. Still not seeing any missile turrets, however. And the simple lack of an engineering bay absolutely puts him really, really far ahead. Does have a scan available eventually there. Doesn't have enough to kill... Uh, the actual Banshee, and it looks like he's gonna be, you know, forced to get out of the game at this point, or at the very least, go home for the time being, as the energy is starting to run out, that Viking will chase it down for all of eternity, so he's gonna be extremely careful. Looks like he's just going for the- <laughs> he's just going for the additional kills. He's just sacrificing himself for the greater good, and that, you know, amazing, amazing tool there does end up falling with 24 worker kills here in total. Crazy! absolutely wild amount of kills there and while you know Neuralisk may have not had the sickest expansion anymore and he may not have uh, had that much economy to play with himself he has definitely evened up the supply amount and even secured himself an advantage meanwhile though it looks like he has decided that he wants to go for the one base all and he's got to be extremely careful there's actually <gasps> there's actually a turn force right out of position here the siege tanks are not sieged up but Teddy GG Catches his opponent with his pants down. He does have that siege tank as well, but it's not going to be landed. The Medivac is going to be taken out of here as well. And all of a sudden, Teddy GG loses, ev or like rather Neuralisk, loses everything that he has been working for so hard. And while he still has more workers than his opponent, the mules have been 
mining away at those minerals the expansion is gonna be a necessity very soon as the main is starting to run dry and at this point in time there is still a substantial amount of marines so it isn't necessarily game over yet but at this point in time he really needs to start pushing the stim pack upgrade the stim pack upgrade seconds from finishing seconds from finishing will he be able to get it he does actually end up getting it there that was an extremely close one however i don't think it matters i don't think it matters anymore now that the Vikings have landed, they do surprisingly well against these type of armies. There is a siege tank. It is starting to do as much damage as possible. We see a single Metafec as well that's going to be picking it up eventually. But at the same time, obviously, Teddy GG has secured his own natural once again. So sadly here for Neuralisk, it seems like most of his army is going to be killed. However, he does manage to hold on. He does manage to hold on, at least for the time being. That siege tank is being brought back... Uh, to full health after getting a nice SCV embrace, trying to do the maximum amount of damage, and obviously with a little bit of overextension, Neuralist could easily come back into this game as well. Now the main issue at this point for Neuralist is that he doesn't have an expansion. He does not have an additional expansion here, which means that he's going to be falling behind economically speaking very soon. Meanwhile, while Teddy GG is also going to be mining out his main base, it's not going to be taking him nearly as long as he still has the minerals in the natural to be mining from as well. That means that this is the army that Neuralist is going to be working with. He even goes for a scan, knows that he doesn't need the mule anymore. He's going to go ahead and drop the tank. Drop the tank, do the maximum amount of damage that he can. And he's going to be cleaning up a big chunk of this army, but no. I don't think this is going to be enough. Slowly but surely, the army is picked off. And Teddy GG picks up game number two as well. Taking him one point away from obtaining victory. Alright, so welcome to game number three of the Grand Finals. It is a best of five series where Tati GG is currently leading the charge in 2-0 fashion. Now in the time time of the second game and this one, we had Humongous donate an additional 250 euro, inching the you know the total amount of this uh, of this charity fundraiser to nearly 2,000 euro. Just hit over 1,756 euro absolutely wild but either way this is going to be what could potentially be the final match of this game and both players are scouting extremely early don't know if they were planning on going for cheese don't know if they even saw each other to be completely honest with you like that bush does not showcase very much they have to add very very close attention there but both did end up spawning with the protos pieces so apparently we've been getting uh, quite a lot of uh, protos games neither of them at the very least have been getting any kind of zerk so, I mean, they, 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 you know, are probably very, uh, pretty excited about, uh, uh, <laughs> about their opponent also not spawning with Zerg. Obviously, that would make it more difficult, but do you think he's going to be going for the expansion? Teddy GG has been playing extremely well so far, not going to lie. Constantly taking these calculated economy risks, and uh, every single time he seems to be coming out ahead. Even though, I think in the previous one in particular... Neuralist get a really big chance of picking up the game if he wouldn't have uh, if he wouldn't have been called off guard in the middle of the map after all of that Banshee aggression. Either way though, Teddy GG going for the gateway into the expansion into the cybernetic score, whereas his opponent decides to go for the cybernetic score after getting two gateways as well. So we see the second gateway already almost about to finish up. I hope this gateway isn't going to be completely walled in. I hope it's not going to be completely walled in. Either way though, Neuralist definitely is planning some sort of aggression off of two bases here to try and get this to work. Now, he hasn't scouted his opponent's natural just yet. Same obviously goes for Teddy GG, who is not aware yet of the second gateway shenanigans that is going on right now in the main base of Neuralisk. What are we gonna see? What are we gonna see from this little probie guy? Yahoo! Oh man. This SLI Walker also donating 13 euros and one cent. Sending greetings from Bielefeld. Awesome, man. Thank you very much. But we see the tech of choice for Neuralisk. Neuralisk has decided that he wants to go for the Stargate. One of the most popular strategies in Protoss versus Protoss as of late. Obviously, you can also proxy all kinds of buildings, but he's going for the more safe and secure version. Now, it looks to be that Teddy GD is once again going to be able to get that economy advantage. He's going to be able to get that economic advantage right from the get-go here. And that's really going to allow him to get a bigger army eventually. Unless his opponent doesn't allow him to deal with it. And honestly, seeing this robotics facility is not going to be all that great for Teddy GG. He's definitely not going to enjoy finding out that his opponent indeed did go for the Stargate. 
Don't see any kind of Mothership course from him just yet. Or actually, the Mothership course already in the natural. That's my bad. But he's going to have a hard time if, for example, an Oracle swoops across the map. Or if, for example, a bunch of Phoenixes all of a sudden get across. And there we do indeed see the unit of choice as well. The Oracle. You see that beautiful little circle in there? That Oracle is already in production. And it is going to be moving across the map shortly. So nice little move here by Neuralisk. Also decided to shade into the main base. Not even just to try and get as many kills as possible. But just to try and trigger the photon overcharge. Get a couple of worker kills. Evening up that economy. But more importantly. Stopping that mothership core from getting too much energy. So it has enough energy for a single photon overcharge. But will that be enough? Will that be something he really uh, is happy about? Keep in mind. Tasty GG. Or Tati GG rather. Absolutely knows nothing about this expansion. Now, here we go. Oracle is moving out. Oracle will be heading towards the natural. There's only a handful of workers there, but probably it will trigger a photon overcharge, at which point he can be heading towards the main base. Now, you gotta keep in mind, we Yay! know about all of this information, but not, you know, the players in the game. Teleco, thank you as well for the 20 euro, man. But here we go. First couple of probe kills are gonna be going down. He's gonna try and target fire dam to the best of his abilities. Not actually taking any unnecessary risks. I quite liked it, actually, but... Did he kill enough there to justify skipping out the natural? He's gonna start doing a little bit of work in the main base as well. He's gonna be running out of energy very shortly though. Only seven energy remaining. But, well, if he could kill a couple more workers, that definitely is very, very nice. And he ended up killing seven workers in total. Definitely got its value worth, but he doesn't have the expansion just yet. And it looks like instead he has decided to go for a one base all in. We see the second Oracle moving the, uh, moving across the map right now as well, trying to do some additional damage. Still no Photon Overcharge being triggered, but we do have enough energy for that at this point in time for certain. Gotta be very careful. If he loses that, that would be really bad. Nice micro though. Does get out of there as soon as possible. We're taking minimal losses and at the same time, the main force is moving across the map as well. We don't quite see enough here for the War Prism. He's not going to be able to, you know, make a lot of army and move them across the map just yet. But it looks like he's going to put all of his eggs in one basket now that the Mothership Core is ready to go as well. And here we go. We see the shading into the natural. Is he going to go for the main? Is he going to go for the natural? Okay, no. He's going he's gonna to actually stop it for the moment. I think he wants to wait for the War Prism, or at the very least until his army is a little bit bigger. But keep in mind, the natural is still going on for his opponent. And... Well, oh, I don't think you want to fight on top of the... I don't think you want to fight on top of the pylons. Seems like a massive risk. A lot of these units are being picked off for practically free. And second Photon Overcharge does end up going down there as well. All of the energy has been drained out of that Mothership Core. Very important to keep that in mind because there's no more energy on that Mothership Core. Once this Photon Overcharge runs out, that is going to be it. But there is a pretty sizable army for Teddy GG who seems to be in a pretty great situation now to grab the lead... And potentially take the tournament. There we go. Mothership Core of Neuralisk ends up falling. And the army of Teddy GG is a little bit too big. And he ends up picking the tournament in a 3-0 fashion. Extremely well played for Mr. Teddy GG. If I could see a kapow from all of you in the chat, that would be flipping awesome. Extremely well played by Teddy GG. I've been observing a lot of his games. He played extremely well. Congratulations to both of you. I really, really appreciate all of you participating. Really glad and really happy to see this much money in donation and this many people that have turned up to check out the finals of this game as well as just the tournament in general. Really, really happy with how this all turned out. Also, massive shout out to the guys that helped me organize this tournament. Wouldn't have been able to do it without you guys. So, massive, massive shout out as well to the moderators. It's been an absolute blast. And I hope that we're gonna be able to do this again because, I mean, 1,790 euros will definitely be able to, you know, help out a lot of kids that, you know, don't have it as nice as maybe some of us do. So, really happy to see this. Really, really cool. And thank you all very much for tuning in.